Google just dropped Gemini Ultra and it is impressive and has the chance to completely disrupt ChatGPT's dominance. And there are some distinctly Google features that set it apart from ChatGPT. So I'm gonna tell you all about it, then we're gonna test it ourselves. Do you think it'll be able to create the snake game in one go? Stick around to the end to find out. But first, check out this launch video from Google. So here's Google's blog post announcement, Bard becomes Gemini. So the first thing to know is Bard is no more. It was a horrible name, but now it is Gemini. They are going all in on the brand of Gemini. And today they launched Ultra 1.0. But the weird thing is they called it Gemini Advanced, which is very confusing because there's Gemini Pro, there's Gemini Ultra, but Gemini Advanced is Gemini Ultra. It's very confusing. And they launched a new dedicated mobile app for Android today with iOS coming soon. So here it says, you can already chat with Gemini with our Pro 1.0 model in over 40 languages and more than 230 countries and territories. And now we're bringing you two new experiences, Gemini Advanced and a mobile app. With our Ultra 1.0 model, Gemini Advanced is far more capable at highly complex tasks of coding, logical reasoning, following nuanced instructions, and collaborating on creative projects. And we are going to test it out. We're not only gonna give it the snake game, but we're gonna give it some of the more difficult logical problems that I've given to previous models in my videos. This first version of Gemini Advanced reflects our current advances in AI reasoning and will continue to improve as we add new and exclusive features, Gemini Advanced users will have access to expanded multimodal capabilities, more interactive coding features, deeper data analysis capabilities, and more. And Gemini Advanced is available as part of the Google One AI Premium Plan, which is $20 per month. So to get their best model on par with GPT-4, you need to pay $20 a month, which just happens to be the same price that ChatGPT Plus is. This is a direct shot at OpenAI. And they're giving a two-month trial at no cost, so you can use it for free for two months. But not only that, they give you some extras. You get two terabytes of storage and I actually pay for Google storage. So, so the fact that I already pay for Google storage makes it even more compelling for me to just upgrade and get Gemini Ultra. And soon AI premium subscribers will get Gemini in Gmail docs, slides, sheets, and more. And that was formerly known as Duet AI. So again, everything is now Gemini. So now let's talk about Gemini on the phone. Today, they're rolling out a new mobile app for for Android only for now, that is dedicated to Gemini. And it is an assistant. So maybe Google Assistant is gonna go away soon and it's just gonna be Gemini. And it says right here, when you say, hey Google, which typically invokes their Google Assistant, now it'll enable a new overlay experience that offers easy access to Gemini, as well as contextual help right on your screen. And it is multimodal already. So you can just take a picture and start chatting with it. And Gemini is coming to iOS very soon in the next few weeks. And this launch is so important important to Google and they view it as the future of their company. So much so that the CEO of Google wrote an entire blog post dedicated to this launch. And there's not much additional information in this blog post, so I'm gonna skip over it, but it is a different blog post from the CEO. So enough talk, I've signed up for Gemini Advanced, let's test it out. So the interface looks extremely familiar. It is essentially ChatGPT. I don't know why every other company is just trying to copy the ChatGPT interface because honestly, it's not that revolutionary, it's not that nice, but they did it anyways. So 
Gemini Advanced right there. And if you click this drop down, you can see that I have the Gemini Advanced option turned on. And before upgrading, it said Gemini and had this grayed out and asked me to upgrade. So I get two free months and I'm using them. Now, a couple settings I wanna show you before testing it out. First, we have this thing called extensions, which are basically like ChatGPT plugins. Right now, it ingests all this data from different Google services. So Google Flights, Google Hotels, Maps, Workspace, and YouTube. And that's really where Google can get ahead of OpenAI because they have access to more data than OpenAI could ever dream of. And not just public data, but also your own private data. There are billions of users for Gmail and Google Search. So all of that data can now be accessed with Gemini. And you can also toggle on and off real-time responses. So it has access to real-time data right away. All right, enough talk. Let's test it out. New chat. So the first thing we're going to do is test out if it can build a snake game, which is my favorite prompt because if you've watched my videos, you know that two models besides ChatGPT have been able to create the snake game in one go. Let's see how it does. Create the game snake in Python. Now, one thing I've noticed immediately upon testing this is it is extremely fast, much faster than GPT-4. And the way that it outputs is really, really nice. And it seems to complete its inference before actually showing the response. So it doesn't stream. So here we go, prerequisites, game logic, and here's the code, really fast. And let's copy this code. So we click the copy button right there. Opening up Visual Studio Code, I paste it in the code and I already see an issue. Screen is not defined, but let's play it anyways and let's see if it works. So it looks like it did work, but nothing popped up. It didn't actually do it on the first go. That is very disappointing. Now I want to see if it's able to fix the issue. So I'm going to give it one more try. So I'm going to give it the line of code that I think is causing an issue. And I say in this line of code, screen is not defined. Also, after running the code, it says, and it gives this output, but nothing actually happens. Let's see if it's able to fix it. You're absolutely right about those issues. Let me address them. So here is the update. So here we go, screen width, and I'm going to put this at the top. Okay. So I updated the code and now we have screen available to us and nothing happens because it doesn't have a loop. So let's copy this and we'll put this at the end of the code and let's see if that is able to fix the issues. Click play. All right. So something did open, but nothing appeared. So that is a complete fail. That's a really hard one, but GPT-4 is able to do it last time I checked. All right, now I'm gonna give it some of my most difficult logic and reasoning problems, one that many open source models fail. So the first one, if we lay five shirts out in the sun and it takes four hours to dry, how long would 20 shirts take to dry? Explain your reasoning step by step. And in their blog post, they explicitly mentioned that Gemini is very good at logic and reasoning. So let's see. Assumptions, uniform drying conditions, similar fabrics, reasoning, doesn't depend on the number of shirts, constant drying time. Even if you have 20 shirts laid out in the sun, it would still take approximately four hours for them to dry, assuming the conditions stay the same. So that is correct, assuming parallel drying. Awesome. All right, one that basically every single model fails because it goes against how the whole Transformers architecture works. How many words are in your response to this prompt? All right, it's telling me to copy and paste it into a word counter, so that is a fail. And for reference, I'm gonna give the same question to GPT-4, and it says, my response to your prompt contains nine words, but it is only eight words. So close, a much better response, but still a fail. Next, let's give it everyone's favorite, the killer's problem. There are three killers in a room. Someone enters the room and kills one of them. Nobody leaves the room. How many killers are left in the room? Explain your reasoning step by step. So here's the reasoning. Start with three killers. One killer is killed, subtract the deceased. Two killers left, nobody leaves. There are two killers left in the room. That is a fail also, because the person that entered the room also is a killer. Last one, John and Mark are in a room with a ball, a basket, and and a box. John puts the ball in the box, then leaves for work. While John is away, Mark puts the ball in the basket and then leaves for school. They both come back together later in the day, and they don't know what happened in the room after each of them left the room. Where do they think the ball is? And John's perspective, John remembers putting the ball in the box. Since he didn't take it out, he would think the ball is still in the box. Mark remembers putting the ball in the basket, and since he didn't take it out, he would think the ball is still in the basket. Perfect. That is a great answer. So that was a very brief testing of Gemini Advanced. If you want to see me do more thorough 
testing of Gemini Advanced, let me know in the comments below. And a couple more things about Gemini that set it apart from ChatGPT. So we have all these options down here. We can obviously give it a good response, bad response, thumbs up, thumbs down, but they also have this interesting thing, modify response. So if we click that, we can ask for a shorter response, a longer response, simpler response, more casual response and more professional response. So I like that you can modify the response right here rather than updating your prompt itself. We also have this interesting thing called double check response. So if we click that, it is actually searching Google. And the last thing I wanna do is test out its multimodal capabilities. So I'm gonna take an image, I'm gonna drag it right there and we're gonna ask it, what do you see in this image? The image you sent appears to be a preview image for an article about a large language model called Lambda. That's not true. Created by Google AI, that's not true. The preview image consists of a blue background with the text Lambda. That is completely false. It doesn't say Lambda anywhere. Below that is the word Meta, which is true, written in blue, false, possibly referencing the company Meta AI. I cannot tell what the entire web page looks like. So that's pretty bad. And if I look right here, it actually has multiple drafts of the response. So if I click, I can go through all the different drafts. So here's draft two. The image you sent appears to be a blue and white llama, but it is actually a stylized illustration created by Meta AI. That's true. Okay, this one is much more accurate, so that's great. And here's draft three. So it's very interesting that it gives you three drafts. That is very different from ChatGPT. And if I click this button, I can actually have the response read to me. So lots of differentiating features. Are they gimmicks or not? Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm excited to test out Gemini Advanced. And from my initial testing, it's pretty good, but I'm not sure it's better than GPT-4. Any competition in this space is welcome. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.